Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today with a review. Uh, it is of the ColourPop and Kathleen Lights uh, most recent collab. This is a little bit old now. I think it's still available on the website. I bought this in December, which was before my low buy started in 2018. Um, but I've sort of been putting off reviewing this because I really wanted to get a good idea of exactly what I thought before I told you guys. Um, and today is the day we're doing it. So if you're not familiar with this collab, uh, Kathleen Lights and Colourpop got together. They created a three-piece lip kit that has an ultra glossy lip, an ultra satin lip um, that is sort of like a nudie kind of shade, and then also an ultra satin lip that is a bright red. So a nudie gloss, nude kind of bold lip and then a red bold lip. Now I kind of like this idea because um, some other collabs like the Laura Lee one had a lip gloss, a metallic liquid lip and then a satin. Um, other ones have uh, like the matte liquid lip in there and from my personal kind of experience with Colourpop um, I much prefer their glossy lips and their satin lips. I find their metallic ones, I'm not really into metallic lips personally, um, and also their matte ones are super, super dry. So their satin ones sort of give the matte effect of a bold liquid lipstick, but it doesn't have that really like lip sucking dryness to it. So I really like that this contained the two formulas that I really like. So. I was very happy with this. Um, and then there is an eyeshadow palette. This is, um, I've got a few of these eyeshadow palettes. Um, I've got uh, My Little Pony one. I've got the Femme Rosa, which is the Karuchi K uh, collab. So I am familiar with them and I, I really like the colors in this one. So I thought I would buy it. So the palette contains 12 eyeshadows and they are each sort of smaller than normal pans. Uh, normal pans are generally, I don't know, about one to one and a half grams. These are 0.85 grams, so sort of a little bit more than a half of a big sort of eyeshadow pan uh, or normal sort of eyeshadow pan. And you can see the colors here. Uh, there is a mix of metallics and mattes and uh, there's a mix of warms and sort of cools as well. So brights, uh, bronzers, you know, darks, etc. So I liked the color. Um, I like the color palette of this eyeshadow palette, which is why I bought it. Um, I'm not super, I wasn't raving about the formula of their eyeshadows in their sort of 12 pan palettes. So um, I was taking a bit of a risk with the quality, but I just thought I wanted to try it because I love the color so much. Um, if you aren't familiar with the packaging of this, it's just a really thin sort of uh, cardboard packaging, quite lightweight, but sort of sturdy. Uh, it doesn't have a mirror, so you know, you can't do your makeup with the mirror, but it's sort of bare bones and it's really affordable. I sort of want to show you the lip pack now because um, this is where I'm sort of, I can rave about the collection, the eyeshadow palette. I'm um, yeah, I'm wearing it on my eyes today, but I'll show you the get ready with me at the end of this video. I kind of struggled a bit, to be honest. Yeah. All right. So these are the shades in the lip pack. I think they're all beautiful shades. These, I must have similar coloring to Kathleen Lights because these are the kind of colors that I go for a lot. So this does have sort of limited edition packaging. It's got these little sort of, I don't know, uh, sun design on it. And it's got ro rose gold lid. Um, so it's really pretty. So the gloss is called moon child and it is sort of a sort of cool toned mauvey nude with a little bit of sparkle in it so there's a slight sort of silver sort of micro shimmer in it that you can't really tell uh, when you apply it to the lips i am wearing it currently on the lips this is one coat it's really really pretty it adds a little bit of color to the lips nothing too crazy with pigmentation um and i think it just yeah, it's a nice look. You can't see the sparkle in it. It just looks like a nice sort of my lips, but mauvey and better. My lips, but better. Then we have the first uh, satin lip, which is called Dreamy. And I really love this color. So this is just a cream color. It's a bold color um, and it settles down not to a uh, matte finish. Well, I guess it's sort of like a semi matte. So it sort of looks matte, but it's not transfer resistant. Um, and it's not that super dry matte, so it's a bit more comfortable, but it's still as bold um, and as long wearing, arguably even more longer wearing than the mattes because I find the mattes sort of um, flake off and crumble off and wear off patchy, whereas these sort of wear off a little bit more 
evenly. So I'm obsessed with this color. I think it's a really, really great twist on a typical nude. So this is sort of like a mid-toned nude. It's definitely not a light nude, um, but often you'll see mid-toned nudes that lean very um, cool toned, very brown or very pink. Now the pink ones on me just look like pink lips, um, but this is a nice sort of warmer version of a brown uh, mid-toned nude. So it's very, very peachy. It's almost got a little bit of orangey in it. And I think it's a really fun sort of alternative to a pinky brown mid-toned lip, if you know what I mean. Um, but it's just like a more summery kind of, I don't know, peachy version, which I love. All right, so the last shade that I was really interested in is this one here. If you know me, my favorite color to wear on the lips is an orange toned red, and this is what this is. Um, now, you can see what it's called. It means dream in French. I'm not gonna butcher the French language, I apologize. Um, but this shade sort of was the main reason I wanted to get this pack, um, but then looking at the other shades as well, I was like, yeah, look, this is a pack for me. So um, this is a beautiful, beautiful orange tone red. It's got quite a lot of orange in it, but it's not too yellow that it makes your teeth look yellow. Uh, it's really bright and really flattering and I really love it. So um, yeah, those are the colors in the lip pack. I'm gonna apply them all for you now. And I'm going to take off my lip gloss and put it back on and show you lip swatches of all of them because I think it's important to do that. All right, so we'll start with the lip gloss that I just took off, but uh, yeah, I kind of wanted to show you how it looks compared to my normal lips and how it applies. Um, but you can see that it's this beautiful, like I said before, cool toned um, lip gloss with a bit of shimmer in it, but it just, it's beautiful. It's a nice alternative to a pinky gloss. Uh, it's a little bit of color in it, but it's not too, too opaque. So you don't have to worry about it kind of like wearing off patchy or smearing everywhere. It applies really nicely. I love ColourPop uh, lip glosses. I think they're so nice. Look at it. So, oh, get it right. So you can just see all of a sudden that my bottom lip looks just like a little bit more lush and plump, but it's a sort of similar color, it just adds a little bit of color to it, a little bit of, um, I don't know, just oh, looks so nice. And I might just swatch them as I go as well. So you can see that it's got a bit of color um, it applies really evenly. It doesn't look patchy. It's got a nice shine to it. It's not sticky So it doesn't make your lips stick together um, and I think that shimmer in it. You can't really see it on the lips but it does just Add to that kind of shine that it gives so it's really really pretty So that is the lip gloss, which I love. I think it's it's a gorgeous color All right on to the satin lip in dreamy, which is like I said before that sort of uh peachy mid-tone nude so it definitely has a peach color to it it's nice and bold um it's a little bit fun it's kind of it look cool with like nice bronze skin um it kind of complement a warm eyeshadow but also um i don't know complement it uh, complement most things i really like this so uh this one is gorgeous you can see it's really creamy So that is this color here. It is a gorgeous color. You can see that it's still sort of settling down to more of a satin finish. It doesn't look super, super drying, doesn't look super matte, but it doesn't have a shine to it. So it's that sort of satin finish. Um, these do wear a long time, but I particularly love this color. It does really go well with the eyeshadows that are in this like collection, but also if you just had like a wash of gold all over the lid and a bit of mascara, this would look gorgeous as well. Um, it's that mid-toned look, but it definitely is an orangey version rather than a pinky version. And I think um, this, even though I've been, I've been looking for colors like this for a long time and I probably have a couple in my collection, but they're few and far between. They're very hard to find a nice mid-toned peachy nude and I think this is perfect. It's not quite at the terracotta stage, like if it was a little bit darker, it'd be going into terracotta zone, but it is still at that mid-tone nude stage, and I find peachy nudes 
on the market are often really really light um, whereas it's hard to get one that's quite this color so I think this is gorgeous and if you're into it I recommend checking it out all right onto this baby I'm very excited to get this one on my face All right, that's that color on the lips. It is gorgeous. Um, and I will swatch it as well, just on the hand. So it's a very, very moussey, beautiful kind of uh, consistency. So, so you can see what you get. You get a nice range. You get a beautiful sort of soft gloss that looks really pretty. Um, you get more of a punchier nude and you get a really, really, really vibrant orangey red. Now I love orangey reds. I've got heaps of them in my collection. Um, and if you know me or you watch my channel, um, you would see that the color I wear the most, that I love wearing the most besides a nude, is one of these types of reds. So before I actually started filming this, I had to go fish this out of my handbag because, yeah, I had it in my handbag because I enjoy wearing it. So these are sort of like, for me, they're really fun colors. They inject a bit of life into a makeup look. Uh, they work with a bro like bronze skin, they work with fair skin, they work with pretty much anything. Um, you can just put a bit of a wash of color on the lid, like a bit of gold or a bronze mascara, pop on a lid, a lip and like you're, you're looking like you're a bombshell. So I love this color. I'm really glad that Kathleen Lights um, put this in the pack because if it was just another pack of like three nudes, I would have been like, um, yawn, it's called Dream Street because I've fallen asleep. Um, but this just kind of really piqued my interest and made this whole sort of set uh, really, really sort of versatile, but also wearable for me. So you've got the bold nude, the kind of sheer everyday, chuck it on, uh, no makeup makeup sort of nude and a really beautiful bright lip and this is fun because it's sort of like that perfect line between a red and an orange so it looks red on the lips but it is definitely it's got a lot of orange in it but it doesn't have too much where it makes your teeth look really yellow I just find it really flattering so I love this lip collection so not only did Kathleen Lights pick my favorite formulas out of the Colourpop sort of tube lipstick range but um, if I had to create a trio myself, I probably would have picked very, very similar colors, maybe minus the shimmer, but yeah, they're beautiful. So yeah, I highly recommend that pack and I, I'm, they're going straight in my handbag. That's how much I love them. Um, the reason why this review has sort of been pushed back for Feb, even though I ordered this in December and I received it early Jan, is because I am struggling to force myself to use this palette. Now that's never a good sign. So uh, like I said, this is a Dream Street palette. It's got some nice shades in it. Um, I really do like the sort of um, combination of colors that uh, Kathleen Lights chose. Uh, you've got some beautiful teal shades. So you've got a matte dark teal. You've got a really beautiful sort of uh, metallic, I would say, oh, it's a really beautiful shade. This just all over the lid um, for like a smoky going out look is gorgeous. Blend it out with this. Ah, gorgeous. Um, I also like that she added in this sort of, um, it's a really interesting color. It's like a, a silvery green. So these sort of shades are very unique and they're really, really beautiful. They're also really on trend. So um, yeah, you get a beautiful range of these sort of whimsical, green shades which are very wearable and they go with oranges and they go with bronzes really really well i've got them all on my lower lash line today so those are probably the some of the best shades in the palette oh, i thought i'd mention as well the matte one is called potion that one is called kaleidoscope and that's mermaid boy uh, then the two other shades that i really like in this palette uh, is sweet dreams which is this matte sort of vibrant red coral shade and also the one next to it which is this burnt orange shade called water bearer those two also are really beautiful i have them on my eyes today as well um, they're a bit of fallout they will they're very powdery products but they do pack a bit of a punch and you can see that you can get a beautiful 
uh, vibrant color payoff from them. Um, and they're very nice and blendable. So those are probably my picks out of the palette, those five shades. And um, I think they can work really well together as well. Like I've got one on the top, one on the bottom. I've had before uh, done sort of like a red kind of colors inner and then like um, the teal colors on the outer outer corners um, but the things that I don't like about this palette are sort of everything else in between now I understand that um, to make a palette sort of cohesive and actually wearable rather than just have uh, brights and um, sort of accent colors in one palette you do have to insert things like cream colors and transition colors as a peach and there's like a more cool toned one um, and there's another sort of like this is a pink to gold uh, sort of highlighter sh chunky glitter shade these are two beautiful metallics when you swatch them so they look really really nice you get uh, sort of more of a, a warm bronze more of a rosy sort of bronze they look really beautiful and when you do swatch them once again they look really really nice but the problem with these eyeshadows are I for some reason they apply really badly on the eye so um, they look nice and they kind of trick you into thinking they're nice but what I hate about these shadows and it goes for um, that one there as well so this is spark um, which once again swatches not too badly um, these are best applied with the fingers and I find it very very frustrating so these are sort of like flaky formula and even though they might you can pick up a lot of it on a brush for some reason it doesn't then transfer onto the eye very well unless you once again putting it on with your finger or you're foiling it uh, these are very very annoying to use on a daily basis and I'm used to eyeshadows even things like morphe eyeshadows that you can just pick up with a brush and you can just put it all over your lid it puts it on like quite easily there's no issues there's no building it up um, metallic bronzers and metallic golds and shades like that are generally really easy to formulate in a way that they apply smoothly and they're pigmented these however they don't do that they're a bit of a hassle and I, I just don't love them I if I loved them I would reach for this palette a lot more because these are the sort of colors that I'm happy to wear with a wash of color all over the lid every single day but the effort that it goes into to apply it, it's not worth the hassle. Um, you'll see it at the end of this video where I'm trying to create this eye look. Um, it just doesn't, I had it, I was using a Haku Hodo brush and it just wasn't putting the product on the eye. And the problem with that is I don't want to spend 15 minutes packing on a product to build it up and actually make it look all right. When I can just reach for pretty much any other eyeshadow in my collection and it, have a beautiful metallic bronze that applies flawlessly so that's very annoying i also find that some of these mattes um sort of blend away to nothing so this peach shade if it it barely applies it all on the eye it just blends away to nothing um this brown doesn't pick up very well and even though it's a deep brown um, unless you use like a very very firm small brush to kind of detail it on it doesn't apply very bold so yeah some shades in here work really nicely so like the teal and that vibrant um, watermelon bright color which is really pretty um, but the others either blend away to nothing or they take so much effort to build up just to get a nice basic metallic bronze look it's not worth the hassle and even though these are very affordable I sort of expect more from Colourpop because they've got some really beautiful performing products in their range that this is a little bit of a letdown. I love the color combination. The color combination is great. Also, uh, in the vi in, when you see me apply this makeup, I had to uh, stop and get rid of all the fallout, put more concealer on, and then put a lot of um, loose powder under my eyes to so I can wipe away the fallout. So this is a messy palette, and unless you wanted to reach for the accent colors uh, with a different palette, um, I, I don't, I don't love it. Anyway, let's go to the swatches so you can see how they swatch.
right guys so that's what i think of the dream street collab which is a kathleen lights collab with ColourPop. Um, i do think they're nice and affordable um, but if i was to recommend either one of these hands down it'd be the lip kit i think the lip kit is fantastic uh, the shades are going straight in my handbag um, whereas this palette um, I might reach for it occasionally if I really want that beautiful kind of um, shimmery teal or the matte teal or that vibrant uh, watermelon coral red shade um, but all the other shades to me are either boring or I can reach for 50 other palettes that do them better so even though this is an affordable option um, I would only recommend it to people that want those particular pops of color at an affordable price. Um, I also find that whenever I was using this palette, those were the only colors that stood out as being dominant on the eye because all the rest of them sort of just like blend away or don't apply very well. So most looks that I created were just some form of the red and the teal, uh, which is exactly what I've got going on today. So yeah, not my favorite palette. This will probably just go into storage um which yeah if this is going straight into my handbag and this is going straight to storage you know what i think about them um and i just i think the formula could be better but the shades are quite nice and they all do work together to create some interesting looks all right so i'm going to get going but uh if you want to stick around and see me attempt to get this look and struggle with it keep watching all right guys, I got my wet hair up. I got the washing machine on, so it sounds, um, there's probably noise. Uh, but I'm going to put this palette on. We're going to see uh, if we can create a look with it. So we will, let's do it. All right, so the makeup that I've got on my face already is pretty much all Project Pan products. Um, and the base that I'm gonna be using is Utterly Becoming, which is a paint pot by MAC. Uh, this was a limited edition, but it's very similar to Painterly. And I mainly wanted to do this look today because um, I've had this palette for a while now, but I haven't used it for a couple of weeks. So I feel like before I tell you about it, I want I want it to jog my memory. I want to see what I can create. Um, I have used, I think, all shades in it, but I don't know. It's good to try it again before I tell you what I think. All right, so I sort of need to set my base, but the only shade that I can really do it with is this one down here, which is Elfish. Um... It's like Elvish, but with a F instead of a V. Anyway, this is sort of like a satin shade. So it looks like the right kind of color to set your base, but it does have a slight sheen to it, which I don't know. It, eh. So I'm just applying that one with a fluffy brush just all over. We'll see. You can see that it is quite shimmery, but it does sort of set ugh, too shimmery. Not good for setting. Not good for setting. Use a different one. Use a matte. Um, and on the same brush, I'm going to just go in a little bit with this shade here. So this is a matte, it's Stardust, and it is sort of like just a peachy sort of transition color. Um, I don't mind the mattes in this palette. I find that this color sort of blends away to almost nothing, um, which I don't really like. So you can see it does give a little bit of color, but then the more you sort of blend, the more you're like, did I, did I put it? Wait, did I put anything on? Did I put anything on? All right, so that is with the color in the crease. That is without it. And to me, didn't really do much. It's kind of annoying. So that shade, even though it's got potential and I really like that sort of peachy color, um, it really doesn't translate on the eye very well at all. You really have to build it up. So because we want to test out some fun colors, I'm going to go for that matte red shade there, which is Sweet Dreams. It's sort of like a really dark coral, I guess. So it's almost like a pinky... A pinky red it's not a true red it's yeah like a dark vibrant coral it is a matte and this you can see has much better pigmentation oh I've got to tap that off it has much better pigmentation than that peach which is a it's good to see that this has good pigmentation but at the same time uh, the peach is probably a shade you use more often so you'd want that one to also have uh, pretty decent pigmentation um, this blends quite well. It does blend away a bit so you can see that it's sort of blended off to a soft pinky color um, But I don't know I still think it's a good it's like a decent color with nice pigmentation and blendability So you can definitely see that that colors in the crease now um, And that was just me applying sort of one layer. I can always build it up to make it a little bit more intense It does look a bit lighter and more vibrant um, than in the pan so the pan looks like that uh, but 
I like this because it's got enough pigmentation where you can see it, but it's also not so much pigmentation that you're going to freak out if you apply too much and it looks really weird. Uh, it sort of blends nicely, applies nicely, and if you want to build it up, which we'll try now, um, you can. So we're just building that up just to show that you can build that up a bit. Which you can see. Built up a bit more. Bl blended out a bit more. So for a vibrant, ready coral, this is a quite a easy to use one, which is nice. All right, then I'm gonna apply a shimmery shade all over the lid. I'm gonna go in with one, with one of these. Um, so we've got Shooting Star and we've got Magical. These are both sort of shimmery bronzes. So you can see that they do look really similar. You probably don't need them both in the palette. Um, one is sort of, I don't know, more orange. One is more sort of rose gold. I might go for that more uh, sort of coppery one. And these are pretty shades, but I find that you do really need to pick up a lot of product um, because it doesn't transfer as well on the eye. This is a really good quality brush. This is a Haku Hodo brush, and I have dampened it a little bit. But if you don't, you can see that it doesn't, it doesn't really want to go on the eye very well. Like I've picked up heaps of product, and it just puts a little small amount on, and it sort of fall out all over the shop as you do it. So um, these are sort of eyeshadows that are a little bit difficult to work with. Uh, probably best to apply it to your finger and tap it on. But I don't know, I find that, I personally find that a little bit annoying. So you can see that you can get a nicer look doing this, but even with a really, really good quality brush that should be picking it up very well. Um, look how messy that applies when you put with your finger. That's uh, the one annoying thing about it. Look how much I've loaded on my brush, and once again, you still can't transfer it on the eye very well. It picks up so much more product and transfers it with your finger. Even when I'm using the brush, this is like, it's dusting away the amount that I've already put on. So these shimmers and then dusting it onto my cheek. The fallout here is intense. So these shimmers, I really don't like, um, and I'm really trying. I'm loading up the brush again. This is a slightly damp brush and it's just not transferring on the eye. Like that is shit. Even brush, even shadows like Morphe shadows, uh, the eye would be packed with product right now. Um, but I'm going in again. So loading the brush up. This is the second time. I'm still not thinking this is, like I can still see the lid color. It's looking a bit better, but it's just not great. Dabbing it on with a finger is a lot better. This is a type of shade that probably needs some glitter glue for it to stick to the eye, but I find that so excessive for just everyday wear. All right, so that's the amount that's on the eye um, after I put two loaded brush amounts on uh, with a sli slight damp brush and tapped it on with my finger, and it just isn't that impressive. A lot of it is on my face. You can see a lot of it has fallen down onto my cheekbones. Um, look at that. That's just not nice. Not nice. And I made a huge dent in that trying to pick it up. So I did use a lot of product. It just doesn't pick up onto the brush and then transfer onto the eye very nicely. All right. So I had to stop and, uh, put some concealer and try to get rid of all that fallout. And I've just put some loose powder so I can sort of dust some away. There's a lot of fallout and it's just driving me insane. Uh, okay. Next. Um, so we talked about these shades. They don't apply very well. These shades are a bit funny. So we've got mermaid boy and we've got spark. Spark is a beautiful sort of light pink with a gold shift. This is sort of, I don't know, I'll, I'll swatch it and show you. So it's almost a silver with a kind of greeny teal sort of color to it. It's really interesting. So that Spark shade, it applies okay with the finger, but once again, it has that same sort of consistency as those bronzers. Um, but Mermaid Boy is a lot softer and sort of nicer to use. So it does have a bit more pigmentation to it. Um, it's a little bit nicer to blend. This feels a little bit chunky. Okay, so I tried to load my brush up with this shade, this Spark shade. I've got a lot of product on the brush. Um, it's sort of flaky and not the nicest, but we're gonna try to use it. So let's just dot that sort of on the lid. Uh, where'd you go? I think I can, I think it's just blending away the stuff that I had underneath. Let's put a little bit of lightness on it, but all together it's starting to look really sort of 
chunky and clumpy. I don't know if you can see that. It definitely isn't the most buttery of eyeshadows. It's just a kind of chunky mess going on. Um, and I've lost some of this red, so I might go in and deepen that and put another matte on the top layer. I'm sort of done with these shimmers. I, I don't love them. Let's go back in with the red, the one successful shade we've used so far. I don't know if you can see that powderiness just from picking it up with a fluffy brush. It's a little bit messy. So with that same Hakuhoto brush, I'm going to go in with some of this brown and maybe some of this color here just to deepen the outer corner a bit. Let's see how the mattes apply with this type of brush. We'll go in with this one first because, oh, did you see that powder going everywhere? Picks up a nice amount of product, but it is very powdery. All right, I just want to try like most of the shades to show you how they sort of apply. The mattes definitely, definitely apply a bit nicer than the shimmers. Just some of that brown. Not the nicest pigmentation. No, don't like it. Where are you, brown? Yeah, that brown, that really dark brown, it, the color that's coming off is that orange color that I used beforehand. All right, I'm not gonna lie, I'm struggling with this palette. I'm, I, it annoys me. All right, for the lower lash area, I'm going to use some of these teal shades. So I'm gonna use this color, I'm gonna use that dark teal, and I might use uh, that Mermaid Boy on the inner corner. I'm going to start with a matte, which is actually a really beautiful shade. So it's similar kind of consistency uh, to this sort of vibrant coral, dark coral shade. Uh, it's got a nice amount of pigmentation. It's quite blendable. Let's have a look. There you go. So you can definitely see it's got some color to it. It does give a blackened sort of teal look, but, you know, it is a dark teal. but it's sort of nice to apply and blend. So yeah, it works, bit of fallout, uh, looks quite dark, looks quite blackened, um, but it, it works. On the same brush, I've just got that shimmery teal shade that I'm sort of putting on the middle part. You can see that it's got the shimmer in there. It applies quite nicely. Uh, this is one of the shimmers that actually does apply quite nicely. Nice amount of pigment and it also sort of blends. So. so it looks really messy and it looks like my life is a mess right now, but I will sort of tidy it up when I take away this powder that is like sucking the life out of my skin. All right, so now on a smaller brush, we're taking this Mermaid Boy color, which actually is quite nice and soft to pick up. And we're putting that on the inner corner and sort of blending it into the lower lash line. And this part here is really messy because I applied a lot of that uh, shimmery color with my finger before. Ugh. This makeup's a mess. I'm so glad I'm not leaving the house. So you can see that definitely does have nice pigmentation. Definitely blends really nicely. Uh, I feel like the teal shades are definitely some of the better shades in this palette. If only the bronzers applied this nicely. All right, let's try to blend some of this shit off. And I don't like baking my under eye area because it looks really cakey when you do so. Ugh, not good for my old skin. Oh, look at the kind of cakiness under my eye. Yuck, 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 yuck. So at this point, we've used most shades. I think the one we haven't used is this one here. We haven't used this one here. I might use some of this sort of transition color just to blend out the top part and that shade's quite nice at you know usable but whenever you do add in any other kind of color that vibrant coral sense tends to just blend away so you're gonna have to keep going back in and building it up which is kind of annoying all right one of the only things that I think can save this look is a rad liner so this is my Inglot uh, eyeliner gel in 66 which is like the perfect sort of dark teal color Mine's a little bit dried, but it still works perfectly fine. I'm 
And I'm going to put that on the inner, uh, the waterline as well. So you can see how that liner just makes the teal and the colors sort of like pop. The liner is the cool thing, not the eyeshadows. And this is the L'Oreal Mega Volume Baby Roll. So it's just some clumpy mascara to finish off this mess of a look and um, we're done.